Mornings, 8, 7 Central on Court TV. Is your mom overprotective of you? Yes. <laughs> All right. And is it fair to say she's, you know, a little on the controlling side? I don't think she's controlling, but she's definitely overprotective. Did she ever try to micromanage your life? Maybe, yeah. Did she have an interest in who you were dating and who you weren't dating and who you should be dating when you were I mean, single? I think she was usually disappointed that I wasn't dating more. You don't need me to tell you the Adelson family dynamic is a complex web of sinister plans, ugly comments about Dan Markell, and eventually a plan that led to murder. Well, here's how the family shakes out quickly. Donna and Harvey Adelson are the parents of Wendy and Charlie. Wendy, as you know, was married to Dan Markell. Charlie dated Katie McBanawa, who has two children with Sigfredo Garcia. Garcia and Luis Rivera were the men hired to carry out the hit on Dan Markell. Now, during Charlie's trial, Wendy testified Dan filed a motion to keep his kids away from Donna and wanted her not to have any visitation. What about the one where Dan Markell is asking that your mother not be permitted to have unsupervised visitation with the kids. My mom never saw that because after he filed that, he then asked my parents to babysit the kids, and my mom baked him banana bread. So you want me to read what she said here? I want you to answer the question. What was the most important part? Of the divorce for my mom? Yes. It says here that for her it was relocation. All right, and did you have two eight-hour mediations in your divorce? We had two very long mediations. I don't remember exactly how long they were, but they did felt they like result a very long in a time. resolution? No. Was Mr. Markell seeking to depose your mom as part of the divorce? I don't remember that. Did your mom call Dan any disparaging names around this time frame? Well, I just read them in the emails, okay. but I don't remember them independently okay did, did she call him an yes a narcissist yes a bully yes religious zealot yes that i don't remember page five okay i'm sorry what was your answer yes yes now the adelsons even went as far as to try to bribe dan with a million dollars to allow wendy and the kids to relocate from tallahassee to miami Another bribe to get him to allow relocation should be the offer of plane tickets so that he can fly back and forth, right? So you're going to potentially offer this big monetary benefit that would allow him to fly back and forth to work. Is that the idea? I never said that I was going to do any of that. Okay, was that the idea that your mom had? That was the idea. All right, and the amount of the bribe is going to be or was at least discussed as being a million dollars. Is that right? That is what they said. Okay, and did you agree with that? No. What about the idea that you could try to threaten Dan to convert the kids to Christianity so that they can fit into the Bible Belt here in Tallahassee? Is that something your mom suggested in these emails? My mom did suggest that. Let Jibbers know that your children will be baptized in the Catholic Church. Have a picture made of them in front of the church, all that kind of thing. That's what, what your mom suggested at one time. She did, yes. All right, still with me, Carl Steinbeck, Dr. Jenny Lacey, and joining us from West Palm Beach, Florida, state attorney and friend of Dan Markell, Dave Arenberg. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, great to have you on the show, as always. And I'm going to start with you, because one of the things that came out at trial was, you know, this was a bitter custody battle. And we heard a lot about Dan Markell, what he was trying to do. We heard a lot about the family, what they were trying to do. It got ugly, and these things sometimes do. I actually found out from talking to some, from, uh, to some divorce lawyers that it's not that odd for someone to offer that kind of money to someone under those types of circumstances. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does, in fact, happen. But what I want you to do is give us a little context for Dan. We heard the things he was trying to do, the fight he was involved in. We didn't get to know him so much as a man. You knew him well. Tell us about him. Well, Dan believed in the system, and the system is one where he was winning. The problem was the Adelson family went outside the system. Dan was winning in court. 
And it, it frustrated the Adelsons so much that they decided to try to do other things like the idea of dressing the kids up in Nazi uniforms, which didn't happen, but that was an idea from, from Donna. If you want to know who's pulling the strings, it's the person who said, hey, dress the kids up in Nazi uniforms, take a picture of them outside of a church, get them baptized. How about offer him a million dollars? So if you want to know who's pulling the strings, it's that person. And so what you have here is a fight between someone who is playing by the rules, who Dan was. He was a big believer in the system of integrity, ethics, um, and uh, people who just play by a different set of rules who didn't care because they didn't think the rules applied to them. You know, Dr. Lacey, some of the things that Donna wrote in those emails, I mean, if anyone sort of looks into all our emails, uh, I don't know what they would find, but some of those things were unhinged. Um, certainly some of the things she said and did uh, didn't seem to be of someone who was happy in their life. But I want to get your assessment because some of the things that she was calling Dan, we heard Wendy testify, uh, she called him a bully, she called him this, that, and the other thing, seemed to actually, you could apply them to her. Um, which I thought was interesting. But what are your thoughts on what we heard about Donna and the way she was dealing with this situation? Well, what I think about Donna and everything that we hear is that she was an emotional manipulator. So I would imagine with her kids growing up in this environment that she exactly was pulling the strings. And when we look at it from someone that does have high narcissistic traits, they usually turn the table around and gaslit, right? So they call the person the very thing that they themselves are doing. And a part of that will make them seem like the victim and the other person being the person who's causing the, the harm. And that's part of the manipulation tactic in these cases. And we see it a lot in these family struggles and family dynamics, especially when it comes to Dan wanted to be a father and he wanted to do the right thing. And their, their needs were going above his direct needs. And when you have someone that truly has high narcissistic traits, their needs trumps anyone else's. Yeah, I think this is a perfect example because if she's got the money to give Dan, her and her husband could be the ones traveling back and forth. Why did it have to be Dan? That's the way they wanted it. Now, after Dan's murder, prosecutors say that Charlie and Wendy went out to a celebration dinner. Wendy testified about this dinner at Charlie's trial, and Wendy's ex-boyfriend, Jeffrey Lacasse, also was asked about that dinner. Take a listen. After the murder, do you recall going to a dinner where you got sick at the table? It was about a month later. And yes, I remember. Where did that dinner occur? Was that here in Tallahassee or somewhere else? No, it was in Miami. All right, and was it like a, out at a restaurant? It was at a restaurant. All right, and when we say you got sick at the table, did you actually vomit at the table? I threw up at the table. All right, and did you ever hear your brother refer to that particular dinner as a celebratory dinner? No. Did you tell Jeffrey Lacoste that your brother called that a celebratory dinner? I did not. Did you was that a one moment, Ms. Cowell? Yes, sir. Hearsay. Overruled. Was that dinner a celebration of the murder of your ex-husband? Absolutely not. That dinner was the first time I left my house after over a month because I was terrified. And if it was a celebration of anything, it was a celebration that I was willing to leave the house and eat a meal. During one of those phone calls, did you learn about a dinner where Wendy had become ill at the table? Yes, I did learn about that. And what did you learn about that dinner? Um, that she went out to dinner with Charlie for what he called a celebration dinner. He said something to her. She spontaneously vomited on the table. And this would have been within... How much time after the homicide? Within a few weeks. Was it specified that the celebration was in reference to Dan Markell's death as opposed to anything else? Wasn't specified. Okay. But whatever it was, that's the dinner where she vomited. That's right. Carl Steinbeck, I want to get your thoughts because one of the things that stood out to me during testimony, specifically when Charlie took the stand, that I got the sense that Wendy was someone that the family felt needed uh, pushing, protecting, and maybe even they didn't respect her as much as perhaps she would want to be respected. She was, you know, a lawyer in her own right, wrote a book, et cetera, et cetera, had some modicum of success, but I didn't get the sense that they thought she could handle her own life um, in the way that they wanted her to. I want to get your thoughts on that. 
Right. They did a lot of stuff uh, from the review of the evidence to coddle her. And keep in mind that Donna and sometimes her husband would drive all the way from Miami just to go up and pick her up and the boys to go all the way back down then to Miami for her to spend there a week or two. So it's like, why would you let your elderly parents go all the way up there, pick up the kids and you, and then drive all the way back? So there's other things like that that show that they were trying to be protective of her and, and sort of do her work for her. But that's why I also think that she is also very calculating in this. And she always played herself the victim with Dan Markell and made it look like Dan Markell was a, an abusive husband, which he was not at all. And so she, she really played on, on the type of uh, things that she knew would motivate her mom and, and, and her mom in turn would be motivated to get Charlie to do something. So she was really sort of the mastermind in playing the different uh, personality, personality issues that her family members have. Hmm, interesting. And uh, Dave, I got to ask you, at this point, Donna uh, is under indictment, ready to go to trial. Um, we've got Harvey and Wendy out there. Do you think this is an instance where prosecutors may go after everyone in this family? Certainly, it seems, as far as the conspiracy charges for Wendy, that there seems to be enough evidence to bring her into the fold. She hasn't been charged yet, and as I mentioned earlier, she wasn't mentioned on the probable cause affidavit for the arrest of Donna, but what are your thoughts on that? Michael, I know Jack Campbell. He's my colleague over there in Tallahassee, and uh, he's told me he's going to go wherever the evidence leads. And I think if they had the evidence to charge Wendy, they would have done so already. I think what they're trying to do is shake the trees a little bit. First, they went after the hitmen. That led to Katie. That led to Charlie. That helped lead to Donna. And perhaps next they could go after Harvey or Wendy herself. But I don't think they've made that decision yet. They're going to see where this goes, what evidence will come out. At the next trial, if it goes to trial, Donna would be smart to take a plea in my mind. One thing, you saw Wendy's testimony, how she said it was not a celebratory dinner. And then just a few seconds later, she said, well, if it was a celebratory dinner. So she contradicted herself within seconds. That tells me that someone may not be telling the full truth. Yeah, I think that became obvious a couple of times uh, in her testimony. Finally, Dr. Janie Lacey. Um, where does this family go from here? I mean, this family's been carved up. Um, in, in the worst way in terms of what they are alleged to and have been convicted of doing. The specter lies over this family, over those two kids who actually had their names changed after the death of Dan Markell. Well, where does this family go from here? Well, where this family goes from here will depend on the outcome of what happens in these next cases, but they're going to get divided. They're going to start looking out for themselves. And I think the most important thing, and you just mentioned it, Michael, is that the victims of these children, that they had their father taken away and then, you know, potentially other parts of their family and, you know, their life is going to be forever changed and living in this in this shadow. So, you know, hopefully there's some good care as they are moving through these different developmental stages of this mark that's left in their family. But I would say that this family is destroying himself from the inside out.